Hello guys, here I am for another video brought to you by Riaf Koba, an English teacher. This is the sixth lesson entitled The Brain Drain. In this video, we're going to be talking about the push and pull factors of the brain drain in Tunisia. If you're interested and you want to find out more, please continue watching this video. <laughs> Welcome back. This is a three-part series in this lesson entitled The Brain Drain. In the previous video, we learned how to deal with a writing task. You can find the link to the video in the description box below. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the push and pull factors. In the next one, we're going to be talking about the implications, repercussions, and impacts of this phenomenon on our country and try to provide some solutions. So consider subscribing to this channel so you can get notified whenever I upload these uh, videos. Before getting started, I would like to show you some statistics about the brain train in Tunisia. Here we go. So you see, the statistics are really shocking and alarming. 80% of Tunisians would immigrate if they had the opportunity, which means that the number will be on the rise in the future. 10 years after the revolution, our country, Tunisia, is facing a brain drain. More and more graduates and skilled workers are leaving the country in search of better working conditions and salaries abroad. Some hundreds of engineers have left in the past years, while the number of doctors uprooting to France, Germany, or Gulf countries each year has doubled. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the push and pull factors that lead up to it. Brain drains often occur due to a variety of what we call push and pull factors. The push factors are the aspects in a country that force someone to leave and the pull factors are the aspects in a country that make someone want to leave. In this case, Tunisia is the home country and countries in Europe such as France and Germany are the destination countries. The push factors making Tunisians leave the country relate to employment opportunities, working conditions, as well as lack of faith in the government. It is not just difficult for Tunisians with college degrees to find jobs in the country, it is actually harder for them than their uneducated counterparts. According to the World Bank, Tunisia is one of the few countries in the world where a higher level of education decreases employability. There are a couple of reasons for this. First, the Tunisian economy is not generating enough jobs that require college degrees. In the public sector, for example, this is because of government hiring freezes. And in the private sector, foreign companies are discouraged from doing business in Tunisia because of its low doing business score, which is a 78th out of 190 countries. The majority of jobs that the economy is generating are low-wage jobs that pay wages lower than graduates expect for their labor. Second, Tunisian employers feel that people graduate from universities without tangible skills for the workforce. Many employers feel no incentive to hire someone with a degree, especially if they demand a higher wage than someone without a degree does. The job market for graduating Tunisians 
is unfriendly in the makeup of new jobs and in the attitudes of many employers. Third, for those graduates who can find jobs, poor working conditions often push them towards employment abroad. This is especially the case in the healthcare field, where unlike other sectors, there is a very high demand for labor in Tunisia. The working conditions are really poor. For example, uh, equipment is broken, doctors have to work for long hours. So the working conditions are not really encouraging at all. Lastly, there is no faith in the government. Young Tunisians do not see the socio-economic situation in Tunisia is changing anytime soon. After the 2011 Jasmine Revolution, many Tunisians were hopeful about the future and eager for the economic prosperity promised by democracy. While in 2011 they thought a new page had been turned, but unfortunately Tunisians have lost hope in their country. With over 20% of young people wanting to leave Tunisia, the very idea of a personal future in Tunisia seems out of the question. The political and economic morousness of the environment is conjoined, especially in the minds of young people, with a desire to leave somewhere else to discover something different. To their dismay, economic prosperity has not followed, unemployment has increased, political stability has led to discouraging foreign companies to invest and create job opportunities. While the revolution was nearly a decade ago, Tunisians still refer to it as a driving force to leave the country. The poor labor markets, the poor working conditions, as well as the general sense of pessimism that is prevalent in Tunisia are collectively moving educated Tunisians to leave the country. So these are some of the push factors. Let's move on now to talking about the pull factors. The main factors in the Tunisian brain drain are the greater employment opportunities, the better working conditions available abroad, as well as uh, the social factor. A 2017 article by the Arab Weekly mentioned that a great deal of highly skilled Tunisians have left the country in the last uh, six years. They've been attracted by higher wages and better career options. This is especially the case in the healthcare industry. Through the past decade, young doctors have been leaving in droves for mainly France and Germany, where there is a high demand for doctors due to an aging population. European hospitals pay better wages, have better equipment, and allow more time for leisure and a life outside of work. Other professionals in information technology have also left Europe. Every year, over 3,000 young IT engineers leave Tunisia for Europe, where wages can be up to 2.5 times higher. A final pull factor of the Tunisian brain drain is the social aspect. Almost all immigrants from Tunisia know at least one person who also emigrated. And three quarters of immigrants knew someone living in their intended destination. This does not bode well for Tunisia's brain drain, since people leaving the country will only lead to more and more people following in uh, their footsteps. That's all for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and also to make sure to subscribe to our channel so that you can get notified whenever I upload a new video. Thank you so much. Love and peace. Riyadh.